Alicia Inga. You solemnly affirm that the evidence I shall give before this Honorable Commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and so I do affirm. Your full names are Professor Wale Shoyinka. That's right. Where do you live? I live in Ajebo Estate, uh, Abeokuta, and partially in the United States at the moment. What work do you do? I'm a writer and a university lecturer. Now, since when have you been a writer and university lecturer? I've been a lecturer since uh, early 60s, uh, and I've been a writer for a few years longer. Um, could you give a background of um, your professional qualification? Uh, the background is uh, literature, uh, theatre. Um, I don't know what other background you would like me. Uh, I trained in the university like other people and um, and went on to be, become a teacher myself. Now let's go back a little bit to your past. Could you recall what you did as a student in 1952? Yes, indeed. Um, I was, uh, like other students, involved in the social life, uh, socio-political life of, uh, of the university. And uh, I formed, with six others, uh, the very first uh, student fraternity in the whole of Nigeria, possibly in all of Africa, I don't know. And what is that, the name of that um, fraternity? Uh, it's known several as uh, Pirates Confraternity or the National Association of Sea Dogs. Now, what was the idea behind the formation of the fraternity? Um, this was the immediate uh, pre-independence um, uh, pre period, uh, when students were very much alienated from the environment. They considered themselves um, inheritors of the colonial mandate. They were very elitist felt extraordinarily privileged and feel themselves part of the general society. And so this uh, organization was set up to break through that mold, uh, to fight petty tribalism, etc., etc., and to give the students a new sociopolitical consciousness, make them feel members of their real, not their imagined society. Now, would you let the Commission into what contributions, if any, the confraternity had made or is making to the sociopolitical uh, political, um, situation in the university as at then? Well, let's begin with the, at the very beginning. In 1952, that was the period when the very notion of uh, blood donation uh, was brought to this country and the first vans uh, visited the university and the pirates were the very first to donate their blood in the student community. Uh, other uh, activities have included fighting drug abuse, drug proliferation in the community. Uh, it's uh, included, for instance, adopting uh, motherless babies. It's included 
giving free medical service, adopting villages to which members of the fraternity who were doctors would go and I think once a week or weekends or whatever, give free medical services to those adopted villages. The fraternity, for instance, collaborated on that last note uh, with the uh, Commissioner for um, Health in Lagos uh, State some years ago when it adopted a village in, uh, in Lagos and suddenly collaborated with the NDLEA in fighting drug abuse in um, holding seminars uh, in mass, in education among communities, and uh, there are other activities much too long for me to recount. Now, you've heard about some abuses in universities and tertiary institutions um, which were associated with some other clubs. Uh, what are your comments about those? Are they related to the confraternity? No. Um, there has been a lot of distortion of the original ideals of this student fraternity by other groups. The um, founders of these other groups you will find, and you check from the record, were usually either those who'd been rejected by the Paris Confraternity, they just, their conduct simply did not qualify them, uh, or else had been kicked out of the fraternity, or else simply wanted to set up similar associations on their own along certain very warped notions of what fraternities are about. And these cults, we call them the campus killer cults, the KKK, have absolutely nothing, no relation at all to genuine student fraternity, which is a normal university culture in most parts of the world, the United States, Germany, Britain, etc., etc. Uh, some of these other cults, some of these cults, I beg your pardon, these other so-called fraternities, were founded, you'll find, usually by children of the elite uh, with spoiled backgrounds, Children whose parents enjoyed impunity in social life and extended that impunity to their uh, children in universities. They are the real criminals of campuses. Now, what you have described so far is the confraternity associated with such behaviors the Paris Confraternity uh, has never been associated with such conduct. On the contrary, the fraternity, the Paris Confraternity, has organized numerous seminars, symposia. I remember the last one I attended was in... Uh, uh, my Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Professor. I'm sorry to interrupt proceedings, but Your Lordship, the petitioner filed a petition before this Honorable Commission, and uh, he has completely abandoned that petition. Because uh, we have uh, parties here who are appearing in the petition concerning the, the confraternity, the Paris confraternity, my lord. So, my lord, we humbly request that he confines his evidence in chief to his petition, or, unless he wants to abandon his petition, my lord. That petition has not even been tendered, it's not before this honorable commission. Hey, please, my lord, I, I take the hint of my learned friend, but the question of the confraternity is adequately dealt with in the supplemental uh, petition, which is dated January 25th, 2001. I would eventually tender it, but I want him... You haven't tendered it. Well, I think you tender it first, mark it, then... He can read it, and it's easier if he reads it. Oh, I, I thought, um, I, well, I, I, take, yes. I take your lordship to... It's much faster if he tenders the two petitions. If you like, he will read the two of them, or I read one of them. Yes. My lord. My lord, it does appear as if we have walked into 
a veritable ambush. We were not served with a copy of this supplemental petition. Only one copy? Only one copy we have, my lord. Well, and that's an ambush. We can make copies if you can give us. Uh, we can make copies, but normally you give us each commissioner have a copy. Well, we said. If you give us what you have, we'll make copies for you. My lords, we sent uh, enough copies to the commission, and uh, my understanding is that they were delivered. Um, your, your, your Lordship, if uh, we may clarify the situation, uh, what's Leonard, uh, my Leonard Senior is referring to as a supplementary petition is it's actually... Send, send copies to the commission. Your Lordship, you? that is a completely separate petition filed by the, the CDOS confraternity. The professor was mentioned there because he was their founding father, but it's not the same as this petition, my lord. That, and that was why, if you noticed, we listed it first on the tentative because we were aware he would most probably appear in that petition. So if, if professor is going to be a witness there, my lord, we humbly suggest that that petition be taken first. Or alternatively, he may abandon this or tender it as, I don't know, but you know, the two are being mixed up. And there are, there are counsel here who are appearing in the other petition, my lord. And they haven't announced appearance for this petition. Uh, now, have you seen the other file? 1474, the other petition. Are you in it? No, I am not. I'm not in that one. I am in 14... It looks as though he is a witness in 1474. Well, what... You he mentioned him too. Yeah, all right. The, what we have done... Uh, is to file an, a supplementary um, petition mm -hmm. to the original one. And he is only to lay a foundation and leave the details to the others. I just want to take him for only 30 minutes. Mm. He is not, he is not, I am not calling him, I am not representing the association of sea dogs. I am representing Professor Wale Shoyinka, and it, ha ha uh, it happens that part of his petition touches on 1474. Yes. We haven't got the supplementary, and then uh, the one we have is on the two-page petition. Yes. Now, the if we save time by reading the two-page petition, and then they will be making copies of the supplementary if you haven't got additional copies. When you have that, then he will read that too. Everything that is, um, needs to be said has been said in the supplementary All right. petition. In the original, in the supplementary, in the original, we have the original. I'm saying, let's start with the original. Give us a copy of the supplementary. Then we make copies as, as, for members. As my Lord places. Leonard, Leonard Senior, do I understand you as wanting to abandon the original and taking on the supplementary? Well, that's in effect what I'm going to do. Well, then yes. the matter has been formally I mean, taken up. Yes. You abandon that, then tender the supplementary and then we proceed uh, there. as as the commission places when the the original one was written he did not have the benefit of advice sorry just one moment i am sure that uh, your client knows much 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 more than that and i don't think that uh, uh, you can say that Prof didn't know what he knows. Now, I think that if you look at his petition, the thrust of his petition has to do with, that is, I'm talking of the original petition that yes. was sent, Yes. was the violation of his rights. That's right. Under the regime of General Abacha. That's right. And some agents that is very clearly mentioned here. Yes. And I would have thought that a lot of the things that we are talking about sea dogs now, is already going to come in two of those petitions that we took in Port Harcourt. And I thought that unless you want your witness 
to as it were move away from this and align himself with the petition that we received in Port Harcourt. If not, you know, the main issues here, and, and I think if you want to withdraw this petition, then you might as well do that and we close this and then move on to take the other petition because it seems to me that um, the issues that he raised here are very fundamental. He mentions specific names of those agents of government that he is holding responsible. And I thought if we moved on to that and disposed of this case, a lot of the other things you're talking about, CDOC confraternity, will definitely surface when we take petition 1474. Now, the, the, my own approach to it is that he suffered what he suffered during the period, during the Abashas regime, as a result of his involvement in student activism and all what have you. And I am laying the foundation so that we eventually move to that. And it won't take me more than 30 minutes. And so I don't have a problem with that, but I think that your client, there are very few people that will associate your client with, uh, with anything other than the international statesman that he is. But if you wish to reduce him to his membership of, or his foundation of the Sea Dogs, of association of Sea Dogs, it's, it's fine. But I think that the issues here are much more than the issues of his being a founding father of the Sea Dogs is not very relevant to what is in his petition. I, I imagine that what you're saying is you're simply inferring, but it seems to me that if you read the petition, you will see very clearly that he has got, and even the, one of the petitions that we received from, uh, I think it was Professor Oshuntokun, that the issues we're dealing with are issues that are a bit familiar to all of us. And I thought, as I said, in order not to move away from the very serious nature of the issues of his, the violation of his rights that are contained in this petition, that's why I think going back to this sea dog business, not only, not only is it time consuming, but we're still going to come to the issue because we have two petitions that are dealing with that. I, I, I take the hint and I thank um, the Honorable Member for the enlightenment. But what I'm trying to do is to go from the known to the unknown. Can I... Respect, May I make a contribution? With respect, sir. Is, is it a lot? My Lord, I'd like to say that if my learned senior insists, we can consolidate the matters. And that should be fine with us. But we have to be in the matter that has the sea dog issue in. I thought so. That's why I said he'll be a very good witness in uh, petition 1474. Yes, my lord. But if you want to attend, uh, if pursue 1403 alone, when we are considering the case, we have to consolidate the two because yes. we have um, so many things in common. All right, can what do we do my, now? Can I talk to my... Yes, is it possible? Or can, I, can I speak to... Yes, please. My Lord, we, I have given the original. I thought the commission had enough copies because we sent enough copies to Abuja, but I have given them the original. Um, I don't think it's in the interest of um, Professor Shoyinka and members of his confraternity to withdraw the original one. I, I don't mind if they, think, if they are hard together. I don't mind. Um, 
um, while so as not to keep the tribunal waiting, may I tender the original for him to read, and then we can move on from there. All right, the original exhibit one. Show him the original petition. Are you abandoning the original petition? Um, or you tender it, he reads it, you tender the supplementary, he reads it. I will, enter, I will tender the two together. The, two, the original the, and the supplementary. All right, original exhibit one, supplementary exhibit two. My, Mark them and give him to read exhibit one first. My, my lord. I would like to enter appearance if the matters have been um, consolidated. In, in 1474, my lord. No, we're not talking about 1474. We're dealing with 1403. Okay. It has not been consolidated yet. Okay. 1403. the two cases consolidated no i want the two the original petition no we have another petition by the sea dogs uh, i don't have a copy of that it, I have not do you want served. to consolidate with them no want i to don't pursue, oh, it doesn't yes. i don't want to go on let's have time my lord read exhibit one I should read this. Read exhibit one. Give him exhibit one. Yes, I have. After that, my Lord, two. Your Lordship, I'm sorry, my Lord, we don't have the supplementary to exhibit one. We can't follow what... It's being photocopied. Just listen and make notes. Thank you, my Lord. Oh, my Lord, um, I assume that in the second um, petition, it affects my client. And so that's why I'm, I'm wondering whether... You're appearing in 1403. Yes. Announce your appearance then... Record there his appearance. 1474, my lord. Yes, but we are talking of 1403. Yes, now my lord, 14... but what I'm saying, my lord, is that this, the, the new petition, the second uh, supplementary petition, affects my clients. Announce your appearance then. <laughs> Mrs. Stop him talking because it affects your client. Announce your appearance. In my 1403. Name, yes, my lord. All right. My names are Gime Joyowika. I appear for Mr. Musa Abdul Kadir All right, then. and Mr. Festus Wamai. Then read exhibit one. Okay. Uh, my lord, it's dated August 13, 1999. It's addressed to the Secretary, Human Rights Commission, the Presidency, Abuja, Nigeria. With, with utmost humility, my lord. Just as my learned friend is being affected by petition number 1403, my lord, I was originally supposed to, my lord, to appear for petition number 1474. And it is that my client too have been summoned to petition num number 1474 that I have originally appeared here. And since the supplementary, my lord, is going to touch substantially on the sea dogs. Announce your appearance. And we Why a Abbas, my lord? Why a Abbas? Appearing for Brigadier General Sule Ahmed retired and Captain Ahmed Taiwo. Any other appearances? None. Well, we can proceed then. Oh, another appearance. Uh, we're really great respect, my lord. Uh, uh, I'm a little bit taken aback. This is because just mere reference to sea dogs in the petition in which the professor is appearing does not call for appearance of all the other counsel 
in the matter. It doesn't call for it. We, I am loyal to the association. I'm not appearing in this matter. Reference, I'm the founder. How does it, how does it have to do with it? It doesn't. We have trashed the issue of the confraternity. We came here, we gave evidence. We are prepared to meet them when they are putting their defense. So my Lord, this matter is just reference. I am. They shouldn't come in and smuggle themselves into this petition. Where they, where they, they say their clients are affected. We are not consolidating. But hold it, hold it. We are not this yes, my Lord. second additional petition. Yes, my Lord. If that is correct, what's wrong with the appearing to my Lord. defend the interests of their clients? My Lord, we are not here to duplicate Secondly, things. Secondly, this is not an adversary yes, proceeding. Lord. It's a fact-finding proceeding. Mm. So as many as we can have to elicit facts, the better for the commission. My Lord, their clients were not mentioned there. Their clients were not mentioned there. Their clients were not mentioned there. Are you opposing there. the appearance? I'm opposing it. On what ground? On the fact that we have a matter affecting the association on the basis of which we are here to meet issues of the association. Which one? Now, is, that is 14... 74. Yes, my lord. It will be called. Yes, my lord. But what I'm talking about. What do you lose if they say they're appearing? My lord. Nothing. The professor. Let's go on, please. My lord, you the professor is here with great respect, sir. With the greatest respect, sir. The professor is here on his personal human rights violation. We can do it like this, sir. For if I can help the commission. If they are saying that the, the supplementary petition touches on the association, they can join that. They can join that to, 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 to the other petition. And let him go on with the original about his human rights violation. on with the original, but the supplementary yes, my Lord. petition, yes, they Lord. say, will touch their clients. My Lord, their clients were not mentioned and they were not. Is, why not wait until he reads it? Then we know what I thought. Well, I was only trying to guide. For effectiveness. Have you read the supplementary? Yes. All right then. They want to listen to it. Read the first one. Thank you. <clears throat> so, it was thanks to the coincidence of my visit here to deliver a lecture at the University of Cape Town, South Africa, on the 11th of August, and a conference on the South African Truth Commission, leading to discussions on the Nigerian counterpart that I discovered that a deadline had been advertised for the submission of petitions to your commission. May I therefore begin by pleading that an extension be granted to those who are currently based outside Nigeria. Many of them are still beyond Nigerian borders for reasons which are not unconnected with the purpose of your commission and may indeed have some useful material for you to consider. My case is not one that I consider at par with the number of harrowing experiences you are bound to deal with. Nonetheless, I believe that the framers of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights recognized an area of potential damage to the human persona when in Article 12 they declared, no one shall be subjected to arbitrary attacks upon his honor and reputation. I accuse the Abacha regime of having contemptuously violated that provision in the most sustained and unprincipled manner with regards to my person, utilizing the full machinery of its ministries of information and foreign affairs for this diabolical campaign. Among the numerous embassies in Europe, Asia, Africa, and America that were used to distribute a glossy publication cynically titled Conscience International and published by a hack named Chief Abiola Ogundokun from an Abuja office donated to him by Abacha's presidency, I propose to single out the Nigerian mission to the United Nations. I shall present a copy of the issue that was devoted almost entirely to advertising lurid nauseating details of a fictitious life for the person of Wale Shoyinka. It was sent to the president of my university, Emory University, Atlanta, with a complimentary slip of the information officer of the embassy. Suffice it to say that 
even as a student of world history, with all its seamy intrigues, I do not know of any single individual, not even during the Joseph Goebbels era under German Nazism, who has ever been subjected to such an unscrupulous campaign of character assassination as I was during the regime of the late Sonia Bacha. I may also add that this journal also flaunted a London publication address. On checking it, we discovered that, this address, that it was fictitious. Let me assure you, sir, that I have taken legal measures to bring the most assiduous agent, Chief Abiola Ogundokun, to justice. A libel case has been instituted in the Lagos High Court and a date has been set for hearing. I also attempted to sue the Nigerian Embassy in New York for dissemination of libel, but was informed by my solicitors that the Embassy was covered by diplomatic immunity. You will see, therefore, that as stated at the beginning, I consider my own persecution somewhat outside the class of, for example, the purge of Ogoni leadership or the callous murders of individuals such as Kudirat, Abiola, etc., or the experience of physical torture by hundreds of innocent people whose only crime was associa association, often merely alleged with democratic activists like myself. I would therefore have preferred, under normal circumstances, to limit myself to the normal processes of legal redress. Those were not normal times, however. I consider it important that the nation and the world be made to understand what was done in the name of the Nigerian people. The resources of government were abused and normally decent civil servants were compromised in the course of their duty. It is my intention to request you to summon Chief Abiola Ogundokun, the number one, the information officer at the Nigerian Commission, the then ministers of information and foreign affairs, as well as the ambassador himself, Dr. Gambari, whom I challenged in New York during my well-publicized meeting with the recent head of state, General Abdus Salami Abubakar, and in presence of three of my colleagues from the democratic movement. Dr. Gambari will testify that a box containing these odious concoctions were indeed sent to the embassy from the ministry and that he was duly provided his own copy. He will repeat what he said were his reactions on leafing through the publication. From India, Canada, Tanzania, Germany, France, etc., I have encountered journalists, diplomats, NGO and human rights officials who were recipients of complimentary copies of this document. In addition to the unaccustomed psychological turmoil to which I was subjected, I shall inform the Commission what deleterious effects this campaign had on the collective efforts of the democratic movements to mobilize, the world, to mobilize world opinion against the brutality of Sonny Abacha's dictatorship. Signed, Wale Shoenka. Now, before you read the second one, you've mentioned the publication. Would you look at this? This is the this is the publication. I seek to turn that. Exhibit three. Now, would you direct the attention of the Commission to those parts of Exhibit 3 dealing with you? The cover, of course, very prominently, um, pages um, well, 
lost the pages on numbered, opposite page 10. Oh, sorry, beginning from t page 10. Page 10, and the opposite page, which doesn't seem to be numbered, but which must be 11. Page 12, 13, fifth, uh, no, that's uh, a rare patriot. I'll just check from the photo scout which I've made of the relevant pages to make sure I miss nothing out. Um, please, can I go back a little bit? Uh, I see that there is also, no, page eight is not important. Yes, page 13, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. You've also mentioned that a copy of, this, of uh, Exhibit 3 was sent to the president of your university. Uh, that is correct. Yes. And uh, how did you come to know about this? The president sent it to my head of department, Dr. Bird, who then passed it on to me. Now, the copy that was passed on to you, where is it? I'm afraid it met with an accident, uh, uh, Your Lordship. I lost my bag. I've been carrying it around steadily, waiting to be summoned to this uh, Honorable Commission. And a very strange incident took place in Charles de Gaulle Airport about a month ago. And I lost a number of documents, a bag etc etc yeah, and it included this particular copy but I wish to state very clearly that the president of my university and my head of department are quite prepared to swear sworn affidavits in the United States and forward them to this commission now you've also mentioned that by the connivance and deliberate encouragement of the Nigerian mission abroad that the copies of Exhibit 3 were sent to many missions. How did you come to know about that? Well, uh, I traveled quite a lot, virtually everywhere during the Abacha uh, reign of terror. And um, we had friends in a number of missions uh, who were very decent people, and I also encountered journalists to whom these uh, publications were handed over directly by missions. So we had our own intelligence network as well, Your Lordship. Now, would you tell the Commission what is your complaint about the involvement of? the Nigerian um, agencies abroad in respect of the circulation? My complaint is a very simple one. This is a very cowardly, very cowardly and sick attack on my person, on my life, on my history, on my achievements, one which also smeared by association all those who believe in the same cause as I did and still do and who fought alongside uh, me and other people. Uh, it, re it created a uh, kind of embarrassed existence in which I was talking to people all over the world. I never was sure whether they'd seen this magazine.